Okay, everyone's gathered at the circle and all calm down. We're gonna play a little game. I'm gonna make a shadow animal and you'll try to guess what you think it is. That's right, it's an alligator. How about this one? Did I hear eagle? Yes, it's an eagle. So today we're gonna to be doing this activity at stations. There's some diagrams that can help you try to figure out how to make these shadow puppets, or we have little shadow puppets that you can use if that's really hard. There's gonna be four stations. The first station is shadow puppets. The second station, you're gonna be playing with colors and flashlights. And at the third station, you're going to be drawing a silhouette of yourself. So you can create a shadow of your own face to the side like that. And then you can trace your shadow to make a nice picture of what your face looks like. At the fourth station, you have some objects and you're going to guess if you think light is gonna pass through the object or not. See, something makes a shadow because light can't pass through it very well. So you would guess and then you would test to see if you're right. So here we'd have some flashlights and the students would be in pairs so that one could hold the flashlight while the other makes the shadow puppets on the wall. And this is to get them thinking about how moving the angle and some of the circumstances to do with their shadow uh, changes the properties of the light that they're working with. And down here, I just have like a little um, diagram of different kinds of shadow puppets that you would do. I probably have this printed off, but I didn't want to print it off just for a demonstration. So yeah, they would make shadow puppets <laughs> on the wall. There's not very many that you can do with one hand, but you get the idea. I could also have some pre-made images that the students can use as shadow puppets in case they have a hard time using their hands and those fine motor skills. I just so happen to have a He-Man prepared here from a long time ago, so I would probably make some more modern and appropriate cutouts. And then at this station, we would just be looking at light filters and how that changes the color of the light. Because I think it's really important to get people thinking at a very young age about the correlations between light, color, and even our sense of sight and vision. For some people later on, that's a pretty hard leap to make. I don't know if you can tell that these colors are even different, but this is green. This is blue. And this is red. And even furthermore, uh, it definitely could be used to look at color mixing and what makes what. That's always a fun challenge. So we could challenge the students to make purple or, you know, make orange. So I also thought it would be interesting to do a station where the students can make something to take home. So they could do their silhouette like this. Obviously their partner would hold the flashlight while one of their friends did their outline for them. Look at that. That's pretty good. That's what you want. High quality art. So for this station, I thought it would be good to do some prediction and testing. Um, kind of like a little mini experiments. So the students could guess whether they think 
light will pass through an object or not. And we all know that there is some degree to this, but there are some objects that the light doesn't really pass through, but you might be surprised. So this is a coaster, a piece of wood, and I'm actually kind of surprised because the light does mostly pass through it. Another one that students can use is their hand. This is just a really high powered flashlight as well, um, which is probably what I would have been using because it's hard to get a classroom as dark as my house is right now. So that was a piece of wood. Um, cloth would be a good one because any kind of fabric usually, light will pass through that quite easily. This is my cat. Light does not pass through her. This is a bottle of Windex. What's interesting is it actually becomes like a lamp. Probably wouldn't use a bottle of Windex. It's just what I have on hand right now, but probably, I think I've seen a milk jug filled with water or some other like colored liquid would be cool. Okay, so hypothetically at this point, all of the students have run through their stations. Uh, they should have had five minutes at each station. So that gives everybody a chance to test some things out. So at this point, I would give them a warning when there's one minute left at their station and that that is the last station that they're going to be at. So I would have a timer probably on my phone or something. It would make some noise and I would say, okay, everybody, you have one minute and then we're going to tidy up our stations. So this is probably, I would probably wait until the one minute was over and then I would give some instructions about the stations. I had planned to have cardboard boxes at each of the stations and all of the equipment that I'm using is um, pretty durable. So I was just gonna have the students, whatever's at your station, the flashlights, the shadow puppets that are made or any papers, just put them in the box and then I just have to collect four boxes after that. So I would give them the one minute morning to finish up what they're doing, just to make sure that every student at that um, station has had a chance to play around or do whatever it is they wanna do at the station. And then after the one minute, I would say, okay, we're going to tidy up. Please put all the materials in the box and kind of walk around and help and make sure that things are getting done in a timely fashion. And then I would call attention and ask them to come sit down at the carpet where we would have a quick little circle talk. So that's all for that. The, it wouldn't need to be a really in-depth circle talk. Sometimes I find that my closure is where most of the learning happens in a lesson. But I think that in this instance, just playing with things and actually making something happen is what's really going to start the wheels turning for the students about how to interact with properties of energy, in this case, properties of light. So I think it would be pretty much sufficient and we would just want to say like, you know, raise your hand if you want to share something new that you learned today. And that would be the end. So I think I have like five or 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes slotted for circle talk. I don't think it would just need to be that long, but it's kind of giving a little grace period for transitions between, um, between stations and then also for cleaning up. So I hope you enjoyed this very awkward hypothetical lesson video. <laughs> I really wish that we were doing this a different way, but it's kind of fun anyways. Thank you so much, Joey, for all your help, and we hope to see you soon.